Hey everybody, it is Lori Crete here, your host of the Beauty Boo Show. And today I have a guest here with me. It's her second round here on the Beauty Boo Show, Angela Gia Kim, who is the founder of Savor Beauty. Angela, how are you? Hi, it's such a pleasure to be back here. I'm so excited to share any wisdom, inspiration with your audience. And I really appreciate you inviting me back. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to chat with you because my mission of this show in 2022 and moving forward uh, is really to help our industry heal. And I think a big piece of that is learning from other people and, and sharing the experience of what we've been through the last few years. Yes, it's been a crazy ride. Yeah, so let's tell everybody, I, I guess let's go back in time. So your first career was of a, you were a classic pianist in yeah. Ames, Iowa. So I grew up in Ames, Iowa, of all places, and became a concert pianist and did that for many, many years. And then, um, you know, as if people listen to the first show, they'll hear more in depth the story. I won't go too much into it, but was about to walk out on stage in Chicago one day and put on this natural lotion all over my body and started breaking out into hives. So it just all started with an itch. And I came back to New York <laughs> City and started making my own creams and serums and lotions and potions in my kitchen. I wanted it to be organic. I wanted it to be, I wanted it to work. And, you know, obviously I'm Korean. So I wanted my mom to love it and wanted it to be healthy for her, but also anti-aging. So um, that's really how my journey in the beauty industry began. I've never asked you this before. We've sat down and I remember one of the things I admire the most about you, you and I were at a uh, this show, the beauty, I don't even remember which one, in Vegas. I mean, no, it was Long Beach. Long okay. Beach. Yeah, California. And we were sitting on the couch and we both had a glass of champagne and you're like, okay, what are your goals? Like, I am the type of person that likes to, I call it a scuba dive and not snorkel with my friends and conversations. And it caught me off guard when you asked me that because people usually don't go that deep that fast. Like I do. I'm like, oh my gosh, I really like Angela. Did I say that? Did I, I actually just said, what are your goals? <laughs> yeah. It was like the first thing you said to me when we sat down on the couch and I go, oh my gosh, it caught me off guard because I'm not used to that. I'm usually the one throwing those questions out. So I'm like, oh, we're going to be friends. I can tell. <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't believe I started the conversation that way. But um, yeah, so I am I love hearing where women are headed. You know, I just want to ask you this because going deep, we're going to start out this way. So growing up, it was at a small town. Yes, a very small town, 50,000 people. So being uh, somebody who had to be devoted to music and learning that skill set, you probably at a very young age developed, uh, I guess, embodied what it was like to be different and to be focused and to be brave. Yeah. Lori, I love your questions. They're so insightful and, and searing and, and thoughtful. Um, definitely. So when I grew up in Iowa, there weren't that many Asians there. So there were a lot of racist jokes, you know, people would often pull up their eyes and call me chink. And so I was, de and then I was into piano and um, so I was definitely an outsider, but it's the best gift that I could have had. And, and then my dad passed away when I was 13. So on top of it, you know, we were financially very tight, you know, so I, I never felt I fit in, but I always say that's the best gift that was given to me because it taught me to be an outsider and create my own path. Right. And that served me really well to not so, care so much about what people think and to go to to go with what I feel is right intrinsically and authentically. And um, so I really think that you pinpoint in something that was a very important lesson that I learned very early on. I, because coming out of the, the gate into switching careers like that, so different, it had to be something that you just stayed really focused on and thought, oh, well, I'm going to make this happen. Was there a big mistake you made in the beginning that now you look at, like stepping into the beauty industry where you go, oh my gosh, it felt so awful, but it was really a blessing. Oh, okay. Well, I, I just, the reason why I laughed is because it's like, what mistake did I not make? <laughs> <laughs> made every mistake. But your question is what mistake that I, did I think was a mistake that ended up being really great? 
Yeah, in the beauty industry, because the people listening in have been, we're feeling beat up right now, right? And I think any insight that it's never been perfect is so helpful right now. Well, I remember when I first opened up my West Village, now it's a boutique spot. So we, I, I opened up there, um, I didn't have any money, Lori, and I put everything on credit cards. And, you know, I always say that me being so naive and honestly not knowing much was, it, it, it just, I went into it without, very blindly. I would do things very differently today. But the mistake, the so-called mistake that I made was I signed this lease. I was so excited because, you know, a lot of celebrities live in this neighborhood. And so I thought, oh, we're going to be so busy. We're going to be selling so many products. And um, three days after we launched, there was like zero foot traffic. And I learned very quickly that celebrities live there because there's no foot traffic. <laughs> and so I, at, at first I thought this is the biggest mistake that we've I've ever made. I mean, I've I've I'm now obligated to this long lease and the rent is so expensive in the in New York City in one of the richest neighborhoods in New York City. So, um I felt like it was a big mistake, but it was a huge blessing in the end because um one day a customer walked in and she said, "Do you do facials here?" And I was I didn't know how to respond to her because the truth is we didn't. <laughs> and I just I don't know what became of me. I don't know why I said this. You know, I, I'm a terrible liar. So I don't know why I said this. I just said, yes, we do come back in a couple of days. And it was a whirlwind from there. I, I, I don't, do you know the story? Did I share this story with you? A little bit of it, but I mean, this is so interesting. How did you, because when you said you opened a spa, I just assumed you had it all set up. I guess I had forgotten that it was really a retail boutique at the time. It was, it's 450 square feet, Lori. So it's tiny. It's a tiny, cute little jewel box in on West 11th Street. And if you walk there, you're just like, it, this is like in the movies. It's magical, you know? But um, no, it was not set up as that. I'm not an esthetician. And I just had created this line in my kitchen and I was following my passion. I had a, my baby at the time was one or two years old, two years old, maybe, um, Sienna. And it was just something crazy. I just opened it up, you know, and uh, yes. And so she came in and said, do you do facials? And I just, for some reason, whatever came over me, I said, yes. Um, I hired an, an, an esthetician. Um, we had protocols back then just because we had started selling into spas. I have no idea how, um, <laughs> You know, there are a couple of estheticians who had found the line and they loved it. They were like, this is gorgeous. I mean, you know, it's handmade. Everything is very quality. There are no chemical fillers and everything smells gorgeous. It felt very high vibration and spa like it still does today. I think this is why spas love to carry us, you know. And so but back then, you know, we just I just created a little treatment room and asked this esthetician, what do you need to buy? We created something. And, you know, in two days I have our first client. And that's really how we started. And Are you still in that location there? Or did you have to move and expand when you needed the treatment rooms? No. So what we did was now it's two treatment rooms. It's a real boutique spa. And we really specialize in high performance organic facials. And, um, you know, before COVID, we were, you know, 450 square feet. It was a million dollar business down there. You know, that's incredible. Wow. Right? So, um yeah, so that's really how we started. And, and truth be told, it, I think this will make your listeners and your audience feel really good about themselves. Um, she walked out in the middle of the facial because we were talking and it was noisy. And she was like, no, that's that's not that was not the experience I was looking for. I like I'll buy the products, but I'm not coming back for a facial. And so um, she left and I just looked. I think my then husband was sitting there and we were just like, what should I do? And so I think I ran after her and I said, do you have any feedback? <laughs> oh, my gosh. She ended up being kind of like a guardian angel because she was a very well-to-do affluent woman. And she gave me feedback. She came back and consulted with me for free. And she just shared a lot of the business. And she said, this is what I think you need to do. This neighborhood needs a facial a place where that specializes in facials. And she gave all this feedback. And that's where I learned the power of asking for feedback. If you fail, ask for feedback and be open because what skin is it off your back? It's free education, right? And once you get the feedback, you can grow. But if you don't get the feedback, you're never going to know why. Why did I not succeed? Why did I not grow? Why didn't I um, expand here? 
And so that's why I love to ask for feedback because I feel like that's the only way that you can grow. Well, there's also something to be said for honest New Yorkers <laughs> being straight shooters, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. I love the New York attitude. It's just, let me tell you. And also let me help you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from the East and I miss a little bit of that in California. People are kind of scared to say anything out here. So it is, uh, it is something that I appreciate and I miss <laughs> as a back East girl myself, but yeah. I am. Um, I want to, so people know we kind of, we dove in deep right away, but so you are the founder of Saber Beauty, which is a really beautiful skincare line. Yes. And you own now two spas. Yes. So we um, were a natural skincare um, brand that's based on Korean beauty rich rituals that I grew up with from my mom who taught me all of these Korean beauty rituals. It was just part of her lifestyle. And um, so we have creams, serums, peels, um, eye peptide serums and cleansers. Um, and we're just coming out with a cleansing milk called Jasmine Milk, which I'm going to send to you, Lori. Awesome. And, um, and so we use all of this. We create back bar for our spas and then our partner spas. And we specialize in partnering with um, women-owned spas and estheticians. So you guys listening in, wholesale options are available. We'll give you details in a little bit. And then you have something else really exciting to share, but I don't want to go there yet. Okay. So everyone's going to have to listen in to uh, hear what this powerhouse Angela is up to. But I want to ask you, speaking of owning the spas, you have your own manufacturing facility as well. Yes. So we, um, up in upstate New York, Hudson Valley, um, we that's where we make all of our products. So I always say that we're born and bred in New York and we make the skincare there. So I love that we've hired women to make the products, train them, and they run the shipping, they run the production, and that's where we ship a lot of products every single day. Okay, so you guys listening in, I think we all get the vibe here that Angela has a lot going on. And one of the reasons I was so excited to bring you on the show today is I would like to know, first of all, what your biggest challenge was pre-March 2020 as a person who's doing a lot, a, a beauty entrepreneur? Well, my biggest challenge back then, I think, was HR. You know, when you're hiring, because at the time I had 40, 45 employees and mo majority of them were estheticians. Um, and, you know, it, just the HR management of it, you making sure you have a great ma manager in place is key and mentoring the employees. So HR was my my biggest challenge. And I, quite frankly, has always been my biggest challenge. I think it is. And you know, just because you are in the beauty industry, you have a lot of different elements of it going on. Manufacturing, the spa, retail, uh, managing people. So that is a lot. That is a lot. And um, looking back now, so you have all these things going on. Tell me what March 20th, 2020 looked like and, and how you navigated that. I really want to talk about this because you did some things that were incredible during this time, but talk about what that day looked like and how you managed to move through the last two years without losing your mind. Yeah. <laughs> well, March, 2020 was really devastating because I, I don't like to fire people and to have to um, make that heavy decision. I think it was March 13th, Friday, March 13th, um, 2020. I'll never forget that day where I just, we just sat down and we said, um, you know, I, I remember a friend of mine who's in the hedge fund business. He came over that day and he was just like, you're going to have to let everyone go. And at that time, I don't know if you remember Lori, but we weren't that advanced, like nobody knew what was going on. Right. So we yeah. thought maybe we closed for the weekend, maybe it'd be two weeks. Right. And he, he was over and he was like, no, you're going to have to close for a very, this is serious. You need to let go of your employees immediately so that they have chance to get into the unemployment line because otherwise, so he was telling me a lot of this foreshadowing, a lot of these facts, you know? And so, um, so we just had to make a decision. Who do we keep? Who do we let go? And um, to make that many phone calls in one day was really tough, but you know, what was the greatest gift out of that, Lori is a, Remember, at the time, people were scared. They were like, they didn't want to be fired either. So we were really scared to do this. But the the touching thing is 
the employees one by one, they were so grateful. They were saying, thank you, Angela. How are you? Are you okay? This must be really hard. I mean, I could cry just thinking about it, that they were so gracious and don't worry about me. We'll be fine. And, you know, it was just, it was a real give, give, get moment. You know, that's my philosophy. When you give, um, because I feel like we're a company that really gives a lot of care to our employees. And so they, and sometimes it's a thankless job. You think, oh, I'm giving all this care, right? But then when the moment came and I needed the strength, they gave me that strength um, by just asking, how are you doing? That meant a lot to me. So that was really tough. And then, then it was like, whoa, we're closed. And nobody knew what was going on. And um, just, it felt like I always say, and I, I know all of your listeners can relate to this. You've built, you've built, you've built. And then suddenly it kind of feels like you built this Legoland and Godzilla just stomped on it. <laughs> and so I said, well, we're going to work. I call it gorgeous chaos. We are going to make the most gorgeous that we can amidst this chaos. Right. So I, um, we launched a lot of products. I mean, we launched a lot of accessories. They were all based on self-love. Um, self-love products. We launched a hyaluronic acid serum. We launched a pomegranate peptide eye serum. Um, we just launched so many new products. We had the time to dedicate to it because as you know, spa operations takes a lot of time. And then I also um, wrote a book. I got a yeah. book uh, yeah. with Martin's Press and it's called Radical Radiance, um, 12 Weeks of Self-Love Rituals to Manifest Abundance, Beauty, and Joy. And I just wrote and wrote and wrote. And um, it was a beautiful time, actually. Was this a time in your life where you go, oh, I'm going to go off my checklist of bucket list things when I have time I'm going to do? Or did this just come just kind of on a whim? Oh, my gosh, I have so much information. I suddenly want to write a book. No, you know, this is this book has been at least well, it's been a lifetime in the making you know, and, um, I tried to sell, I tried to sell the book about 10 years ago. So it's been a, t a decade. Oh. And at the time I was, it, it was kind of in flux. I didn't know what to call it. It wasn't everything in the universe kept saying to me, you have more to learn. You have more to learn. You have more hardships to get through. You need to, in order to help other people, you have to heal some hurts first. And so I think when it happened, this COVID thing in March, 2020, I was ready and I noticed a couple of things like I, I noticed that manifesting comes very easily, easily to me and things sort of flow through me very eas easily. Um, you know, there are other things that, that don't flow as well, but the manifesting is, is just sort of, I don't know, it comes in abundance. And so I was just looking at what do I do? And so I created the rituals and what do I do to call in the abundance, to call in the manifestations? And I wanted to help other people do the same, even during COVID, you know, a lot of the, during the pandemic, a lot of businesses shut down and truth be told, we should have been one of those businesses. But for some reason, I was able to manifest a cash flow that was, it was positive. It was, and, and keeping to our tight team and keeping a really good vibe, um, during one of the toughest moments in business. So I wanted to share, how did I do that? You know? Well, who, I want to go back to that. And then I want to talk about the book more, but who did you decide? Oh yes, we're going to keep this team member on. That's a hard decision. And you know what I want to also point out that New York was kind of the pioneer in COVID. Like you yes. guys, we were watching to see what happened on the East coast. And everyone kept saying pivot shift. What, the, what does that even mean? Right? Like nobody knew what was going on. So you guys were a pioneer. So you were a brave leader during this time. But yeah. how do you decide who to keep in the team and who to let go? Well, I kept my spa managers um, because I was like, well, we're going to open in two weeks. No, we're opening up in four weeks. No, we got, you know, I got to have them back on for ops, right? To, to make sure that we're able to carry on logistically. And that stretched to like a year and it just kept going. But they they put themselves to good use. They um, one of them was, became an esthetician. Another one um, did a lot of online consults. Another one did um, VIP sales. She just made herself useful with e-com. I mean, that's what I'm so impressed is the resilience of women. They were so inspirational. Yeah. I kept the people who were on e-com. So what an incredible time to sit down and be supported this way and to watch people powering up. That energy has to be in your book, Radical Radiance. Yes, yes. 
Well, I also want to bring up that the last time I was on your podcast, I was married to Mark um, and we had been married for 20 something years. And so right before COVID, we had decided to separate. So on top of it, I was, you know, I was alone with my daughter in the middle of New York City. And, you know, he he stayed in our farmhouse that we have it, that we had in Hudson Valley. But I think I want to bring this up because we're really good friends and great co-parents. And that's something that I actively manifested because when um, we separated, I thought to myself, I don't want to lose his friendship. And at the time it was, it was rocky. You don't know what you don't know. And just last night, my, um, my partner and I hosted a dinner party with my best friend and Mark and his girlfriend, you know? And so we were there and here's my man cooking for my ex. And we were just, it was a beautiful night. Like it was happiness in a nutshell you know, and that's manifestation. And, and that's what I think is important to answer your question. I, I think it, it, I know, I don't even think, I know it boils down to your energy. It boils down to what is your essence and how are you vibrating? What are you focusing on? And so that's why I feel like manifesting has come easily to me is because I think I focus on the gorgeous and the chaos. I focus on the higher energy, the the manifestation vibration that I want to have, I, I become obsessed with that feeling and I focus and live in that feeling. And that's where it all begins. And the book teaches you how to do this because the truth is there is a lot of negative, lower vibrational things happening in our world today. So how you say you focus on that, how do you get there? The, I think the trick is to look at life and all of its ups and downs as a gift. Do you remember when I even told you about our first client who walked out in the middle? What would most people do in that situation? Cry. Cry. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Forget it. I don't need facials. They might blame the esthetician. They might blame themselves. They might blame fate. They might become a victim on it. No, but what I did was I went to her and I, because I felt like she had a gift for me. And I was like, so tell me what was, tell me what made you walk out? Cause I want to improve this. And so that's sort of how I approach life. It's like, no, I want to know why is this not working? And then I'm going to figure out the matrix of it because there's a gift here in this, in this cluster. And I'm going to figure it out. You know, there's a lesson to be learned. And I think there's tremendous um, abundance and manifestations that can happen when you start looking at life this way. Well, it's also immersing yourself in somebody who vibrates at that level, because I will tell you, you did a class, a little mastermind type thing a few months ago, maybe five or six months ago. And I, since then, I've really changed my morning ritual routine. And I'll tell you what I do now. And it really started with listening to you speak about how you start your day. And, and you were talking a little bit about your book in that session. So I get up in the morning and the first thing I do is I remodeled a piece of my home during COVID. I now have this very California fake fireplace <laughs> that I turn on, but it makes me happy to set the ambiance. Yes. And I then I put on manifestation frequency music instead of the news. I but love that's on that. my big screen TV. And then I light my abundance candle and then pour my cup of coffee and then I go to work. So you I triggered that. this and it does just being there allows you your whole day to flow a little bit better. Yes. Okay. So, so here's the book. This is, um, Goop just, uh, endorsed it. I'm so happy. Radical radiance. And, um, so I, I want to share something cause I heard your morning ritual and I love, 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 love it. I want to ask you to add one thing, which I think you already do, but maybe you didn't bring it up. So the whole premise is, how I teach you how to treat your skin because then we're going to apply those lessons to your soul. So your skin and soul have a lot in common. They need purification, detoxification, layering on love, nourishment, um, exfoliation. And so that's what the first chapter is. It's start with your skin. And the first ritual that I always teach is how to wash your skin, how to wash your face. And so I obviously, I love the double cleansing K-Beauty method where you do oil cleansing and followed by um, a water-based cleanser after. And it's just a total purification of your skin and soul. And so in the morning ritual, I, you know, even this morning when I went through the Savor Beauty ritual, we have these words. It's, you know, purify, renew, 
quench. So whenever I'm going through it, I always say I quench my thirsty skin and soul. I, I do these affirmations, you know, it's, it's a ritual. I nourish my skin. I nourish my soul. Um, I give nourishment to myself as needed. And so in the morning, I'll just put on a lot of glow. And I look at myself in the mirror, no matter how bad I look, my hair is everywhere. I say, I am glowing. I am radiant. I am mesmerizing. And then I come and do my morning ritual. And so I, that's how I try to then prep my soul. I try to get it so that it's glowing, radiant, and mesmerizing. Because if you be this, if you be this, right, you are and you attract like frequency. So, um, so that's the most important thing that I love that you're setting up your morning like this because that's the most important thing you can do for yourself. Well, okay, so I did leave that part out and my fellow estheticians can cringe right now when I say this, but I get up and I seriously, I take the, I use your caviar eye cream a lot, like coffee for my eyes. I literally put that on and then I'll put a little bit of your raspberry serum in my hand and press it into my face. It's one of the, I get out of bed and I do that first. And okay. I don't know why being an esthetician didn't mention that. <laughs> Yes, because caviar is perfect. It has caffeine, so it just wakes you up. And while you're drinking your morning coffee, you can you can have coffee for your skin and for your body too. Um, good. I'm glad you do that because I think that's really important, Lori. Is that we when we do this first? That's why I start a lot of my rituals with the skin because you learn on the exterior what's going on, and then you can you can apply it to your interior, which is invisible, right? Yes, so yeah. Up, when you're layering on your serums, I, I always mist first, then I put on the serum and then I layer on the moisturizer and I massage it on with love, right? So that's what your soul needs too. Your soul needs that time where you are soothing, that you, you speak to yourself with kindness. And so there are just so many of these rituals in this book that I talk about that how do you layer love onto your soul as well? I love that. Yeah. So that's what I spent COVID doing. And honestly, I was watching all of these businesses go out of business. Um, a lot of brick and mortars. I mean, New York City, it was like, it was for rent signs everywhere. And people were really impressed. They were like, how are you? Because we really, I don't want to say thrived because that it feels like the wrong word, but we really, I mean, we survived with a lot of conviction and I feel like we thrived because we came out with a stronger message of self-love, you know? So, um, that, but we did that because the energy trickles from the top, right? And so we need to understand that we as healers, as estheticians, spa owners, you know, our energy, it's, we have a lot going on. There's a lot going on when you, people think, oh, I want, I want to have a spa because it's so calming and peaceful. Do yeah. You know really the case? No, there are a lot of logistics that most of us did not get into the beauty business for. I think this book would be great for people to even retail in their lobbies for their clients to take. Yes. Home. Yes. It's, it's, uh, yeah, we'll sell it and start receiver spas. Um, obviously it's available in all major retailers and then with spas. It's, I feel very passionate that I want estheticians to, um, to really understand what's in the book so they can teach it to their guests and their clients. So what, if somebody read your book, what do you want them to set it down and think to their, themselves after like finishing it up? What, what do you want a woman to take away from it? Okay. I just want them to promise me that they will dedicate 90 days. It's 12 weeks, 12 weeks. Okay. 12 weeks to self-love. What magic will come into your life if you prioritize yourself, nourishing yourself in on all levels, right? And so if you do that, then what will happen? What will you attract into your life? What success can you, can you attract, magnetize? What kind of love can come into your life? Not only just romantic love, but, you know, improved relationship love, family love, friendship love, client love, you know, what will you magnetize? How will you expand? And most importantly, how will you feel? So that's what I want them to take away. Whether you use the rituals in here as a jumping starting point, I always talk about customize these rituals, make them your own. And it's a ritual if you do it daily and weekly, right? Um, and how will you plan for it so that it's carved out and baked into your schedule? What will be different in your life? What magic will you manifest? Radiance, joy, abundance. 
that's how I really genuinely feel that I've lived my life, right? Especially in the past five years, applying and giving myself love, which was not always the case. Because Lori, you know, I grew up in a very strict household, um, a perfectionist environment where concert, as a concert pianist, you can't make a mistake on stage. And, you know, I didn't like myself very much, which is why I, I turned to work, you know, I was a workaholic. And so I really had to learn how to love myself. But there are certain things that I did along the way that I think self-love is an action for which your future self will thank you. So when you make strong financial decisions, your act that's actually an act of self-love. When you save, I, I like to say save 20% of what you make, especially if you don't have a pension or retirement fund, you need to save for yourself because that is an act of love. We can drill it down. That might feel overwhelming. What about just how do you prepare your food so that you are eating well during the day. See, that's a, an act of self-love that your future self will thank you for, right? Um, creating creating a uh, healthy relationships and making, if something doesn't feel right for you, saying it in the most loving and kind way to your friend or your lover or your, your spouse or your significant other, your mother, or your sister, whatever, and saying, you know, that didn't feel so good to me. And in, you don't have to be... Um, rude or or defiant about it, just saying that didn't feel good to me. That's not for me. That's an act of self-love, right? Um, let's bring it to to let's bring it to clients saying, no, you can't late cancel. Um, I reserved this time. Uh, and, and you can do it very gently and but and lovingly. And but there's a strength, there's a quiet strength that people will respect. I'm really sorry. This is our policy that we have a 24 hour cancel policy because I have reserved the room and products exclusively for you. And now it's too late to fill that time. Um, I Maybe you'll grant one time courtesy, but the second time you can say, I'm sorry, maybe this isn't you just putting your foot down. This yeah. isn't, this is not the way I can do business. Right. And then the third time, maybe even saying this isn't the spot for you. We're not a good fit. We're just not I a good fit. Because I I, you're opening up the space for more. Sorry, go ahead, Lori. Although to be, you, I was just, I've run numbers on this and the average beauty solo practitioner loses about $25,000 a year if they do not have those boundaries in place. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you take that up to having one employee, two employees, you can times that by two, three, four, whatever it is. And it really is about confidence. And if you dive deeper. Confidence is about really appreciating and loving yourself. Yes. Yes. And I, I would say that when you do the radiance rituals and when you do self-love, you really gain a, a sense of confidence. And what is confidence? Let's drill it down a little bit more. It's respecting yourself to know that you deserve this, the space and respect that you give others. It's being fair to yourself, right? And yeah. and I love what you just said. It's con confidence is not getting angry and like saying, "How dare you do this to me?" and and late cancel whatever the case is, right? It's more a loving approach to protecting you and asking your guest and your client to to be how how do I say it? No, I don't want to say I help with the well, just to be courteous. To I it's honor, honor my business, right? We honor each other as women and people get so offended sometimes when you try to do that. But here's, I had this weird, aha, insightful moment the other day. And I, I'm excited to share this with you because I haven't told anyone this, but I was walking around the park, listening to a podcast. And it was the day where I, my social media manager put a picture of me tinting my eyebrows online. And I got so much hate over that. Like people were telling me I was ugly, that it looked awful. And, and um, my team is like, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I really don't care. And they're like, why don't you care? And I go, because I've, I've noticed that it feels just as weird to accept a compliment to me as it does somebody bashing me online. So why aren't we more receiving of the good and more aware of letting go of the bad, but both of them kind of feel weird. Do you feel like that? Yeah. To Yes. And I like, because I think you've probably reached an equilibrium, a sense of balance in your life where it doesn't really matter what people say, because yeah. that's not your inner experience, you know? 
Yeah. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to get better at taking compliments. That was my takeaway because both of them feel weird, but right. it feels more strange to me for somebody to say something really nice to me than it does for somebody to say something awful. Right. <laughs> doesn't know me. I love that approach. It's very evolved and it's, it's, I think kind of not vi when you're vibrating at a level where you need to hear the negative, you can raise that vibration, right? You can raise the vibration so that you don't even notice all of the ugly hate. Yeah. Cause there is a lot of it. So it's just staying in the lane of positivity. And I've, if I can be honest, I've noticed something so different about you and your energy, which I think came about in COVID, I remember getting on calls with you and you'd get really close to the screen and you'd say, look at this, I'm all broken out. I'm so stressed out. And that was kind of how you were running around. And now every time I talk to you, it's like, uh, I want to talk about self-love and a higher vibration. And it's hard to elevate there in the middle of a global pandemic. Right. Yes. I don't remember saying those things, but yes, I'm sure my energy was very crazy stressed. I mean, you know, COVID taught me that you can't control things anymore and to let it go. Yeah. And also if it's not working, go with the flow. Yeah. You know, so I think we all learned that lesson. I learned during COVID the feminine approach to things. And that's just receiving of them. Not always because I've been a pusher, pusher, hustle, figure it out. Or, and gosh, yeah. if you just put it out there. You said something to me I wrote down in my little journal the last time we talked. Uh, and it was a private conversation. But you're like, now you just have to be, do, receive. Is that? Oh, my gosh. Yes. I, I feel like you're like another sister from a, a sister from another mother. You always like to say what's on my mind. Okay, so that's my definition of abundance. Be, do, receive. So when you are, you be. When you are of the essence and, you know, all of us have our essence, right? And it's all knowing. It's amazing. It's our, it's our soul. Right. And when we're connected to that, it's like our, we're connected to our higher self. And so we start attracting amazing things. But that's not where it stops because I uh, that's not where it ends, because I'm a big believer in doing from that center of being. So that's where the planner, you know, we, I've got a saver planner that, as you know, it's called My Next 90 Days. And I call this planting seeds. And it's got 12 weeks in here. You know, they're tabbed 12 weeks. Do you see it? And it's really all about planting seeds. And planting seeds is an action that has potential growth. So I love planting seeds, whether it's pitching in the media or, um, you know, mentoring my employees. Those are seeds that you're planting. And then receiving. And that's where I think you might have noticed an sh energ energetic shift in me. Because um, I'm like you, Lori. I'm a big, like, I go after what I want, right? But now I just, like, receive. I trust that it's coming. I don't have to work so hard, right? I don't have to like stay up at night worrying or getting stressed or, you know, texting in the middle of the night. No, I don't have to do that anymore. It's going it, to, it, I will receive. And receiving is also about gratitude. It's about receiving um, whatever comes. And maybe it's not exactly what you thought it was going to be, but it has its gifts, right? Yeah. yeah. That's so 100% for sure. Um, so I was going to ask you, uh, another thing that you've received that I was so excited for you, because I think, again, people have so much doom and gloom attached to the last two years of our lives. You have a beautiful new house or <laughs> whatever you call it in New York City, right? Like you have this great new place that you also manifested during this time. Did you write your book in your new place? No. So I moved into my new place. I sold my uh, um, I lived on the Upper West Side and then moved to, to Harlem. And um, into a beautiful three bedroom, have two balconies and um, a beautiful kitchen here. It's a little messy. <laughs> uh, listening out on iTunes, this is also on YouTube. So you can go to the Beauty Biz show on YouTube. Oh, and check yes. It out well. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I, I manifested. I just I really like, you know, let me show you kind of how I manifested this one. So I um, I have these manifest rituals and radius intentions that I create on my notes. And I just read this to myself, um, you know, at least once a week. So I have, and this is all in the book where I, I created like a pie for a holistic being. And I put, there's six parts to the pie. So there's yourself, your soul, your success, your social, 
your space and how are you savoring life? So that could be travel, enjoying life to the hilt, right? So space, I would, you know, I would tell myself, I've sold my apartment to someone who fell in love with it on the spot. We purchased a gorgeous, modern, three-bedroom, two-bath apartment. And, and then I go in there about how I feel in here. And I talk a lot about healing, spa-like environment, inspiring views, gorgeous sunlight, stylish decor, cozy rooms, sweet love, friends, family, laughter, meditation, cooking. And I would just like imagine myself doing it, but most importantly, feeling it. And so I, I just, I think that's the, tr that's being, right? Some of my, my most powerful manifesting friends all say the same thing. It's how to get in that feel of what you want to welcome in. Like mm -hmm. you really have to step into your future self. Yeah. Yeah. And I was able to, yes, you're right. You have to, but actually stepping into your future self, but also knowing that your future self is inside of you and feeling all of the delicious, succulent emotions. Yeah, and and I'm attached to outcomes. Like I'm not really attached to an outcome. So for example, I used to be like, well, we need to get into X million dollars of sales. We need to do this. We need to do this. And rather I, I like to focus on how I feel because if you sit, if you are fixed on an outcome, that's your outcome. And then you could still feel really crappy. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And I, I want to know too, because how are you, creating like the going back to your book this popped in my head a few seconds ago how are you creating the friendships and the connections during a time when everyone is so scared to meet up yeah that was very lonely i mean a lot of zoom parties virtual cocktail parties um now it's opened up and now i'm we uh my partner and i have a lot of dance parties we love to par dance and eat good food um that was really sad though during covid because i didn't get to see my mom for two years and i know a lot of everyone feels like they couldn't feel see um loved ones are you finding that now you're able to because i find people now we're in march of 2022 now and finally people are coming in getting their facials and stopping and talking i don't know if california people are just hardcore but the second that I got to open my doors. I called it a period of beauty with vengeance. I had people lined up outside waiting. And I remember when we talked, you said it was a little slower and now you're starting to pick up again. Yeah. People trickled yeah. back in. Well, it was scary because, you know, I don't know about in California, but in New York, we had, um, we had to make sure that it, by mandate, all of our employees have to be, um, vaccinated. And a lot of our estheticians didn't want to be vaccinated. So we couldn't hire a lot of them back. Um, you know, so it was just like, it, it was really tough to run business. Very tough. Wow. I, it's such a heavy decision to make as a business owner. Um, I do want to go back to the book again, though. And you said you were just sponsored. Is that, or endorsed? endorsed. endorsed. Yeah. How, you're like a PR maven. So okay. tell me, how do you do this so well to get the well-deserved exposure and I guess, you know, light to you? every project you do? Do you have a tip for somebody listening in on PR and getting your stuff out there in such a beautiful way? Okay. So I talked a little bit about give, give, get earlier, right? Give, give, get is when you give, you get. And I say, I call it two gives because I kind of just give and then whatever I get, I receive. Right. So, um, so when you want to be in the press, the best thing that you can do is pitch an editor in a give, give, get way. So it's all about them. It's not about you. We often go to the press and we're like, well, I want you to feature me. I want you to feature my facial. I want you to feature my products. But it's not about that. They have a think about it from their point of view. They have a job. They need to write a story about, let's say, a spring roundup on skin care for spring to summer. And you know, every all the editors are writing about that, right? So you want to make sure that whatever you're pitching them is relevant so that they can do their job well, so that they can get as many clicks as possible, so that their boss is, is happy, so they get to keep, keep their job. Now, I just gave you a lot of information, right? So what's in it for them? Thinking always, what? why would they want to feature my product? And then when you write to them an email, you can say, 
Hi, Marcy. Um, I know that you must be writing some spring or summer roundups or products or, you know, um, facials. I'd love to invite you to come in to get a facial. We just launched a new spring transformation facial. I'm just making this up and I would love for you to come in to experience it. And then would you consider it for a possible um, inclusion in a story you're writing? See, that's that's a very different energy than, hi, my name is Angela Kim and I have a product line and feature me, 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 right? It's very right. different. This this pitch or this, this um, way you're asking them, are you writing a, a particular story that I can be helpful for? And they need you just as much as you need them, but you need to position it in the same, in, in the, the best way so that it's a give, give, get. I approach HR in the same way. You know, when I'm talking to my employees, it's give, give, get. It's, you know, my current spa manager, she's fantastic. And at first we weren't sure if we were going to hire her or not. And the first thing I, I asked them is what I probably, what I asked you is, so what are your long-term goals? Where do you see yourself in two to three years? Because if I know where they want to go, I can help them get there. Right. Um, we want to make sure we're working synergistically and that we're in the aligned and I can give to them as much experience and knowledge as possible. And then they can they can create their own wings and go out there and um, create their own thing or work for another company. But they've learned something here, you know, so it's give, give, get. And you didn't attach an outcome to it. I think some people, when they ask the question, especially in the hiring process, what are your goals? And somebody says, well, I want to be doing this two to three years. They get fear and feel threatened. Okay, well, I'm going to spend all this time training this person. They're going to leave me. You have a completely different approach. Well, here's the thing. I think that's a legitimate concern. I, I don't want to call it a fear because it's it's a red flag if you're an esthetician and you're about to share all your like for example I'm thinking of the um, the more boutique esthetician who is hiring somebody to help right and you're about to train this person you're about to um, give a lot to this person and you want to make sure that this person is ethical and has integrity and doesn't take your client list because you've worked very hard to build that right so I wouldn't call it a fear I would call it a red flag and a legitimate concern that you need to work with so. But the bottom line is people are going to want to do that anywhere. This is a hair salon industry, right? But that's where you, fo I think you and I spoke about this one time. This is where you really focus on what makes you brilliant. What makes you so brilliant that they cannot take your stuff, right? So I know at Saver Beauty, we have our Saver Beauty line. We have, um, we have expensive rents. We have expensive equipment. We have a client list. And sure, if you want to, it, someone could, but we've set up our business legally so that they sign non-disclosures. They sign, um, they also, we give them a lot of training. So they have to pay us back for that training if they leave within one year. So we've set it up legally with, and, and created structure and they know what they're going into wide eyes, wide open. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> No, that, I mean, it's just interesting. And I know people listening in are going to love learning from you. So anything that you share, I myself as a working esthetician value. So yes, well, and the thing is, is, is it's important to not live in that fear. It's, it's important to set yourself up so you are protecting yourself. That's an act of self-love. Um, but then, you know, making sure that you are putting all your radiance into your business and, and what you've built so that people are very attracted to you. Clients are not going to want to leave you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It is that connection for sure. Is that connection? Um, I want to, as we, uh, wrap things, it's funny because the whole time we've been talking, the name of your book is radical radiance and you've had this sunlight beaming on you. <laughs> it was like, perfect. <laughs> Perfect. But as we wrap up today, I want you to, and I don't know, are you still, you had something exciting you were doing. If people pre uh, did the purchase, pre-purchase of your book, you were actually sending them a free gift. Are you still doing that? Yes. Okay. So what you can do is if you purchase the book, um, you, you will receive a uh, coconut jasmine and jasmine milk pre -clean or double cleansing system. So that's the very first ritual where I teach you how to wash your face the right way. And it becomes a sensorial, gorgeous, beautiful, aromatic ritual that you will, it will change your life. If you do it every night, it will change your life. And that's what I want you to do. 12 weeks, 90 days of washing your face at night. And so um, you get that as a gift. Um, so all you need to do is when you purchase, you're going to email us your receipt and we will make sure that you get that gift. 
do they go to your website to purchase it that way or how? So if they purchase a book, they go to amazon.com and then they email hello at saverbeauty.com um, with a receipt. And then when the book is launched, which is slated to re be released on 6 14 22, which was when I, it's my two year anniversary of when I met my partner. <laughs> oh, so that's yeah, so funny. that's isn't that funny? That's that date. I'm wondering if I met this person in. Um, no, you didn't. You didn't. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so my partner and I actually met on June 12th. Um, okay. 2020. 2020. Um, so anyway, so it's two year anniversary. So when we found out that's when it was being launched, we were like, oh my gosh, this is so special. Um, so anyway, okay, I digress. <laughs> um, you just email us the re receipt. And when the book is launched on 614, we will send you the book with the pre cleanse gift. Awesome. Well, I'm so excited you did something with the jasmine scent because there's jasmine plants in my backyard and they make me so happy. So happy they smell so good. Oh my gosh. It's a night blooming fl flower and it's so sensual and it's just so alluring. And it's just the perfect way to give yourself that just that love, you know? I have two jasmine stories. I lived in a guest house in LA. And I remember looking out my back window and they planted jasmine that went up the pillars in the backyard. And the the gentleman I was renting from had his little daughter out there who was like three teaching her how to smell the jasmine. And I thought, oh, that's such a special moment. Oh my God. So, yeah, I love it. So what was he saying to her? You know, I was just watching the moment. He was just teaching her how to, you know, and every time I opened my windows, it would flow in. And he was just teaching her maybe how to stop and smell the roses, but it was Jasmine. And I thought for a dad to be teaching his daughter that, it was so sweet. It's yeah. so beautiful. I love it. Just taking that moment to savor. I mean, that's actually, that's another thing is when you take 30 seconds to savor your what you're grateful for, it really starts to permeate into like every cell of your body. And then you start to feel very uplifted. It's an elevated vibration that I love to practice as well. Well, if it's anything like your champagne cleanser, which is by far one of my favorite cleansers in the whole entire world, I'm so excited to try it. Oh, it's milky. It's a it's the dreamiest, silkiest, milkiest uh, cleansing milk. I just love it. And how do you come up with your products? Is it something that you work with your team on or are they inspired when you're doing your morning meditations? Um, I think it depends. Sometimes the estheticians suggest it, like the peels, they all suggested. The coconut pre-cleanse, they suggested. Um, the hyaluronic acid, that was a big request from them. Uh, the hyaluronic acid serum was a huge request for lighter serum. Jasmine milk, I just felt like I want some, a cleansing milk on my skin, and I want it to smell like jasmine and neroli and just super sensual. I just, I don't know, it was something that just came because I felt very inspired by it. It was during your moment of love. <laughs> All of that that you just mentioned, you can tell it was inspired as you were falling in love. <laughs> can you tell I'm in love? What's that? Can you tell I'm in love? Yes, yes, I can. And I, um, even when you just said that, you can tell what has come into your life through the last few years in that aspect. So I'm really happy for you. And in love in so many ways. Yes, with my partner, with... Um, you know, just life in general. It's just, it feels, it's, I'm in a place where it feels good. Uh, well, you know what, if you, if people want to go on and check out your skincare, I don't think we've even given them that website yet. So how do they go on and look at what you have to offer as far as retail and wholesale options? Okay. So saverbeauty.com. Um, we are really an estheticians line because I feel like my estheticians helped me to create this line. And, um, if you are interested in carrying it wholesale and back bar, I think what estheticians really appreciate about us is we have very low minimums. Um, we're, we work primarily with women-owned businesses, so women uh, estheticians and women-owned spas. And um, you can email uh, partners at saverbeauty.com to get started with a discovery kit. And you know, Lori, we adore you and thank you so much. You've really helped us with a lot of our uh, partners as well. So I really am grateful and appreciative of everything you've done for us. Oh, thanks so much, Angela. I appreciate you too. And I can't wait to try your new cleanser and read your book. 
So thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. And have fun. I know you're going on a birthday trip soon. So happy oh, birthday. Thanks for the first time. Partying time. Dancing. I love dancing. That also helps to raise the radiance. I keep reading about this dancing, like in feminine energy. It keeps popping up in my life. I think I need to incorporate more of it. I love, I, and we didn't touch on feminine energy, but I love that you're talking about it. Um, that's a whole podcast on its own. Yes. Well, we're going to have you back soon, maybe right after the book launches. So yeah. we can see how that went. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lori. Thanks, Angela.